So tell my listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, so yeah, my name's Daryl Hopcutt, uh, from, from the UK. Um, currently live in the UK and lived in Canada for seven years prior to this. Um, and as, as I mean, said, I'm a, a nutrition nerd. I've kind of got no, no definite kind of, um, nutritional, but like, uh, education. It's all kind of from a school. It's just my own teaching. Um, the reasoning behind that is more so. I feel that if if you go to a school or you go to somebody who's teaching something, that person already has an ideology. Whereas I feel like if I can just learn it myself, not that I can't learn from others too, which I do a lot. Um, and my mind changes all the time. But yeah, my, my world is nutrition and, and food. Mm -hmm. So what have you been, uh, what's been happening in your life recently that you expected and did not expect? I expected and didn't expect. So, uh, so like I said, I moved back to, I lived in England for, well, I grew up in England, lived in England for 26 years, moved to Canada for six years, um, and then moved back to England. That was kind of during the, the, the pandemic time. Um, and I didn't expect to love England as much. I've got go, going away from your home and then coming back to your home. I feel that the time away, you kind of, it's, it, it always feels better when you're somewhere, somewhere else. The grass always seems greener. But coming home and seeing like the greenness and the countryside and uh, of the UK, just, yeah, I didn't expect to love it as much as, as I have um, and just appreciate it a lot more. Mm -hmm. So when you moved to Canada for the six years, what kind of culture shock did you have? Um, I mean, the place I grew up in England was it's a place called York, so about three hundred thousand people population wise. It's so pretty small, uh, and then I moved to Toronto, which is I believe four million. So that was a massive culture shock in itself. The first two weeks I was there, like I was close to coming home because I was like I didn't know how to use the subway, I didn't have a clue how to get around, and it was just a massive. I just didn't, I'd been in a big city, I'd, ne I'd never been to London before in the UK. So going to a big city in, in Canada was just a massive culture shock. Um, luckily, my my wife now, but my partner then, talked me out of, of leaving and going back. But um, yeah, it's it was just, just the whole vastness of, of North America, which I still love. I love how big it is, and especially the states where you can be in one state like I don't know, California, and they go to another state and it feels like a different country, let alone a different state. That's so true. I've gone to Atlanta a couple of times to visit my sister's boyfriend and his family. And it's a like completely different like atmosphere than it's here in California. It's yeah. like, I'd rather move over there than live where I'm currently living now. I love that. I love that. It's um people people talk about the states, like they'll say, Oh, this this is crazy. It's about like you like Miami and New York are completely different different worlds um but the same country whereas england's a bit different where you can drive from the top of england to the bottom in like what eight ten hours so really small yeah i saw you posted a couple of videos on your youtube channel and instagram about you took some trips in the past few months to different cities in, in europe yeah we went to went to rome last year um and rome was really nice it's, you know what going from like toronto back to back to york and then now i live in a place called howden which is about half an hour away from york and it's even smaller the the population is four thousand people so yeah i've gone real small like everything's closed past 6 p.m there's nothing you can get <laughs> there's there's if you want to get fast food we've got a domino's like half an hour away that's it um but yeah going to like big cities like rome again loved rome um pollution was kind of gross i didn't realize how much again i don't know if that's because i'm now in the countryside of england everything that when i go it's just polluted feels worse uh and then recently we was in barcelona um which was i, I love barcelona it feels a bit more more relaxed than than rome did mm. So yeah, how like where where are you living right now? How are the prices like food wise? Is it expensive or is it like in the middle? I'd probably say it's in the middle compared to what what you guys are going through. 
So I, I know I, I, it's pretty intense in America, right, with the prices and the grocery stores. Mm-hmm. Not even uh, grocery stores, just general, like, everyday, everyday. Uh, everyday stuff is, like, gone up a lot. Yeah, um, and I see our our mutual friend, Teresa, um, always posting about in Canada, the, the, the grocery store prices there. But I, I don't – I mean, they've gone up a little bit here, but – it's no way as bad as what you guys are experiencing. So you're not going. You guys are not going through an inflation that we're having here in the states. No, I think here they. I think the government wants people to to feel like we are, so people start the, the freaking out and kind of having the panic or not panic buying or whatever. Um, but honestly, when I go to the grocery store, like if my eggs are a ten p more. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose my lose my shit over that. It's 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 fine. But yeah, it seems like you guys are completely getting fucked. Yeah, we are every yeah. from every direction, and we have an embarrassing admi- government administration that's not really doing anything about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I not to go too far down the down the rabbit hole, but it seems I, I've never known a time when. Big countries like the UK, US, Canada, Australia, these, oh no, I know Australia's not in the West, but it's kind of a Western country, but these Western countries, they just seem weak. Like the leadership just seems weak. It just seems, and I think that's a plan, I feel that's a plan to make the West look as weak as possible because the le- like the, none of those leaders I have confidence in at all. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. So what was one topic or event that made you question the world you live in? What opened up and sent me down many rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it might have been COVID, you know. Mm-hmm. It might have been COVID. Because I was like, before COVID, I was into like, let's say, fun conspiracy theorists. So a Bigfoot, like things that can't hurt people, like Bigfoot or uh, stuff like that. Um, but since then, kind of diving deeper and and just kind of again with food and the, and the water just understanding that we're kind of being poisoned from like every angle if you if and that sometimes they have to step out of that and think like because if you look at everything from from the clothing to the food to the environment like it's it's kind of toxic mm-hmm, yeah, it is and people don't care about it at all they just go on with their day yeah and then and then they 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 never question why they get ill or they 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 it just yeah if people understood kind of like the the damage that like that has been inflicted again just on water in general like i just the fact that i wouldn't drink tap water here um just cuz it it's full of stuff that shouldn't be in it yeah i agree i'm the same way i'm i'm questioning the water we have here where i live currently we can get, there's been testing and you can look it up if you live in like California, any United States states that your water is kind of fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And then like, it's just what they added fluoride back in the day to protect teeth for cavity. Not even, not even fluoride. There are other chemicals in the in our water that people don't know about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm drinking this now. I, ideally, I don't drink out of plastic, but I'm in kind of the... Uh, middle ground of finding a really good water filter um which costs a bit costs quite a bit of money um but that's kind of my i would unfortunately i'd love if tap water was like just great and just like but it's not um there is something though talking of water while i'm on the subject there's the the website called findaspring.com i don't know if you've heard of seen i've never heard of that website before but carry on it's 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 global so you basically find you put your postcode in there or zip code um and it shows you where natural springs are where water's running and it's coming down through the hills and there's a tap and you can literally go and collect the water there's like one like 45 minutes from from me um the only reason i don't go there is because it's got some iron rusting on the tap so there's like orange particles in there um which I just want that to get cleaned up. Then I've got because it's literally water coming through the mountains in in like literally how we used to get water back in the day. So yeah, I mean that that's the best way to get water. It's mineralized. It's coming through the rock. It's coming through the the, the earth. And yeah, 
Yeah, so speaking of water, do you believe that the water we get from like these spring mountains and stuff, are they actually clean? It's hard, right? Because like I always when I when I when I'm when I'm going to drink this spring water, I always imagine if like in the newspaper about local man who is scared of tap water gets really ill drinking from spring water. Like I always feel like that's gonna be like the irony of it. Um but I mean if anything, and again, not a doctor at all, but if anything, I would I would assume you know when you go to a foreign country and you can't drink the water, but the locals can? That's me. Whenever I go to India, I cannot drink the water because I've done it many times and I got severely sick, which I ended up in the hospital for like, I have a story about that. So I took a trip to India in 2007 or six. We went to a water park in Bombay, the major water park they have there. And we decided to go in the tide pools. You know, the tide pools that the water comes to you, everyone. Yeah. So me, it was me and my mom, we went in there and I got the biggest wave hit me. I swallowed the water and then two to three days after I got severe diarrhea, which ended up me, me getting administered to the hospital locally where my grandmother lived and then transferring into a big city hospital and then rushing back to a local hospital here in the States where I'm from. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, that's for someone who lived there. It probably wouldn't have been an issue, right? Because mm -hmm. they would have had the the gut biome to handle that. So again, going back to the spring water, I don't know if it's the spring water is a problem or it's because our environment we live in we've maybe been sanitized too much that like uh, the human stomach is is super acidic, and the reason for that is because it's supposed to be, be able to handle pathogens, um, but it, it's been so dampened down. But yeah, I mean, we can't drink. If we go on holiday to Spain, we can't drink the tap water. We have to get bottled water or anything like that. So, do you guys boil the uh, water bottle if you get like if you live like in a like like a hotel or some like those kind of houses that you can rent for a few days? Like they bring water bottles. Yeah, we just bring water. We just bring, yeah, yeah. It's it's not ideal, but it's it's yeah. It's just you can't trust the tap water and. Again, like you said, if you're not used to that environment, you can get ill. Mm -hmm. um, I got ill, similarly, in, in Thailand. Um, I thought I'd get ill from the food, but it, it wasn't. It was, I went for a healthy smoothie, and that's where they got me. They put the local tap water in there, and uh, that's when I got ill that night. But not as ill as you, it, it seems. But, um, yeah, it's, it's the water can mess you up massively. Mm -hmm. So what did you want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be <laughs> when I wanted to be when I was younger. I don't know why. Probably too many American movies that I watched. I wanted to be one of those super Americanized lawyers in those suits that walk into a courtroom and just say something savvy, almost like Jim Carrey and liar liar. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do that. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why I wanted to do that. I was obsessed with wearing a suit to work as well, which now is my the complete opposite of my vibe and what i want to do um but yeah it was it was somewhat along on those lines yeah i went to i had uh i don't know if you guys do like jury duty where you have uh everyday people go serve jury be a jury for like a case i don't think we do but did did you get called up the other day because i saw you tweet you said yeah that. i did i get i did call up for two days and then that's a long other story yeah i did get called up in the two days i was there for like getting processed or getting picked the lawyers for both sides of the plaintiffs and the defendants, they were like talking like l lawyer stuff that I didn't even understand. <laughs> it was, it was like crazy. And the guy, the guy, the both, uh, both sides of their attorneys were like very dressed up in suits and all that stuff. Yeah. I wanted to be that suit, hair slick back. Yeah. I wanted to, I don't know why, again, probably just from movies, but. Yeah, that, that 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 wasn't a dream that I wanted to pursue. But when I was a kid, that sounded fun. So what are you doing now? So now, um, so I do nutrition coaching um, for people. Um, and then I just work on our food business here as well. We do we did catering in, in Toronto and we're uh, setting up here as well. And we've been doing that for some individual clients and stuff like that. Mm. So do you also have a podcast? Because I was looking through your Instagram page and there was like a, a like a hashtag to your um, 
podcast. Do you still do that or not anymore? Yeah. So no, I, I did set it up around a year ago um, and I enjoyed doing it. And I was actually having this conversation today with my wife that I, I, I want to start doing it again. But as you know, you, you do pretty consistency. It, it, it's one of those things that you have to keep doing. One, to, to keep any kind of uh, listener base. And two, to get better at it. I can already see. I can already see how 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 much better you've got just from watching the podcasts that I've seen throughout the last year. You doing? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's 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 clearly it's again it's it's an art. You can. It, I know people think it's just talking, but you can get better at that. So yeah, I mean, maybe I'll set it up again in the future. But with moving house from New York to here and stuff, I kind of lost the passion. But yeah, I'll probably pick it up in in the future at some point. You should have you should have your wife come on and you both could talk about food. Yeah, she'll she'll say Daryl's crazy and I just I just want to eat good food. That's what <laughs> yeah, that's basically what she'll say. Yeah. So speaking of rabbit holes, did you go down any like local government conspiracy there that we, made you wake up? Le- so when so when COVID hit, it was I was in I was in Toronto. Um, and again, like I said, that's what kind of made me wake up, but yeah, I mean, just, just watching how the government, the local government in Toronto kind of acted kind of, for example, when you, when you'd walk into a, this was like from like, a, it, this felt like something from Black Mirror. I walked into a, a shop and all of the kids magazines and, and crayons and coloring books there was like, like, like signage over it. They couldn't buy it because it wasn't uh, a, a necessity. Like it was stopping kids from buying toys. I was like, "What? What is going on? Like this is this is madness." Um, and then again, you just start looking at kind of the, you start looking at the hypocrisy with a guy called Doug Ford in Toronto. So he was the mayor. Mayor, I think, of Toronto at the time. Um, I don't think he's the mayor. I think he was the. I, I, you know what? Politics really bores me. But I know he wasn't a mayor. He was a person under that. So I, I don't know what that was. But basically, he had also a signage company, and his signage company was making all of the signs for the COVID stuff, like six six feet apart. So dude was getting paid on the back of all these signs that were getting out. So no wonder that like there was so many signs because the guy's company was making them and the city of Toronto was paying him to make them. So it's just like, you don't have to look far and you don't have to scratch a lot to find like how everything's corrupt. But like you said, it's kind of like, you can go crazy if you, if you start looking everywhere, because you're like, Oh my God, every, everything is, is wrong. Yeah, I did that. I went down like 50 different rabbit holes before I decided, okay, I need to back away and I just move on from it because everything they've been saying and other people are saying is either true or just made up bullshit. Yeah. Oh, Doug Ford's a premier, by the way. I don't know how that relates into US politics, but there's the mayor, then there's a premier. I don't know, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things where I've had to back away a little bit because I would find myself going down rabbit holes and I'm like, it, it's... I think part of the, I think part of the psyop of it is if you go down enough rabbit holes and you go deeper, you can actually get really upset. And you can actually get to a real dark place. And I think the powers that be, the elite, whatever, probably know that. They probably know that if you've got people who are smart enough to to work things out. It's really easy to get into a dark place. You're like, wow, the, everything's toxic. Everything's against us. Everything's trying to hurt us. Everything's trying to make things worse. Whereas sometimes you just have to have know about it, understand it, but don't let it consume you because it, it will. Mm-hmm. And I have friends like that. I have friends on Instagram. Where I'm saying like, all their life is just conspiracies. That's all it is. And then they also complain about, oh, I'm not feeling that great and all that stuff. I'm having like mental health issues. Like, yeah, you need to back away from all that stuff and do things you enjoy doing. You need to have balance. It can't be all conspiracies because you, you'll you just, I, you'll just grind yourself down. It's not healthy. Yeah. I've gotten to the point now with like social media and people I follow, they, 
talk about conspiracy stuff, I ignore it now. I'm like, I'm done. There's too yeah. much of this. And we know that 99% of what goes on now is f- by the government. The government is doing it on purpose. Yeah. They have an agenda that need to finish by a certain year. Yep. Yep. And it's just, yeah, like people forget that you know, it's not just what you eat and drink, what you take in, it's visually what you take in as well. You're like, you're absorbing that. You are you might not think that it's having much of an impact, but you're mentally taking in. It, it's it, it's being registered by your brain. And and if you're just constantly just fixated on, on negativity, which when you go far enough down the conspiracy route, the, the, it's just all negative. It's all bad. Um. Which again, I like to stick to the fun stuff like aliens, which is pretty popular right now in America, the UFOs and stuff. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, now if you could fix four world problems, what would that be and why? Uh, fix four world problems hunger, just because, again, I, I, I everyone have you know what? When I say hunger, I suppose everyone been in the same playing field. Because ancestrally, historically, we, there would have been periods of famine. There'd have been periods of of lack of food, or not being able to eat as much food, and you'd have to kind of divide it up between the tribe. So it kind of more so be everyone on the same playing field. I think the problem is, there's so many people with nothing, and so many people with too much. So it'd be probably a pl- equality. There's a playing field of, of just being able to have an abundance across across the um, across the board. Another one for um, another one would be would be speaking of what we spoke about to just completely eradicate of everything the government has done to our food and water supply. And again, if I could, if I could make that back to where we could just turn our taps on, and have clean running water, or if we, if we had the gut biome from being outside, and 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 being able to go and drink from a spring, that would be a massive thing because water, one, you shouldn't have to pay for it; it should be available. Water is one of those things that would have been available pretty like accessibly, and people die a lot. In, in, in third world countries from from lack of water and and i just i just think again it's because we've we've polluted the environment so much we've polluted everything um another thing would be would be how we get these things make like it, we were again people people like to complain about things but complaining from a phone made from cobalt and whatever from from probably child slave labor if you go far enough again down that rabbit hole you'll find that it's pretty gross um the stuff they get from the congo and whatever so it'd be fixing that it'd be it'd be but again that's that that'd probably tie you on my fourth thing it would be just fixing people's mindsets that we a good thing about podcasts and social media is that we get to communicate and 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 stay in touch with each other but i think we all spend way too much time on on these things like no, i agree it, like I'm it's, of that. whereas like it's it's almost like i was having this conversation today with my wife like i was like have you seen that chimp documentary on netflix no i have not but you can it's, like new, it's, like new, it's like a new chimp one and it's like it's really good and they go to war with different tribes and stuff and it's this big chimp thing um but you watch them day to day and somebody's patrolling the area somebody's going to get fruit somebody's going to hunt somebody's going to gather uh they're grooming each other they're looking after the children they always have things to do and i think phones social media is our modern way of living always having things to do because i'll see people like they'll be on the phone and just put your phone down and then they have to grab a book or they'll have to put they have to put a tv show on and we're just so we're so we're not able to be bored anymore and that's where a lot of time well, that's where creativity comes from when we, are, we allow ourselves to be bored and just like so again it'd be probably a wish for like humanity just to like have a break from because these things connect us but they also disconnect us so much i agree 
Now, if you could choose four favorite movies in any genre, what would that be and why? Four favorite movies in any genre. Let's go. I'll say, okay, Titanic. And that's because I've got, when I was 10 years old, my auntie was babysitting me. Um, and she rented Titanic from Blockbuster. And I watched it at the 10 year old and I was bawling, crying. And then my mum came home and I was in the kitchen making some toast. I was buttering my toast. She was like, uh, why is Daryl in the kitchen just crying, buttering toast? I was like, I've just watched Titanic and it's broken me. It destroyed me. <laughs> Watching Jack dive off the door and sink. It was, um, yeah, it, uh, Titanic's definitely up there. Uh, Interstellar. I, I love that film just because I personally believe that's kind of where I, I think we live in a dimension. I think we live in, I think there's multiple dimensions. Uh, we just can't understand them. But I think that's probably what we live in in a dis different planes of existence. But I love, I love that film. Um, <laughs> again, silly film, but I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big Jim Carrey fan, and I love, uh, I love Ace Ventura. I do, I do. I think it's a silly film, but it's. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a fan, uh, and the fourth one. I don't really watch many films, but I'm just trying to think if I do like American Psycho. I like I I like American Psycho. I like Christian um, yeah Christian Bale. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, yeah, probably that. I've just got watched it recently. Now, if you could choose four favorite shows in any genre, what would that be and why? Four favorite shows. The Office. That's just, we call that eating TV. So, again, probably not the best habit, but when, we're, when we have our dinner and sit down, we put a TV show and it's always The Office. I think maybe on our 20th round of doing like all seasons, just going through and going through. Um, so, The Office. The, the UK show, which I'm not sure you would have heard of, it's called People Just Do Nothing. Well, so, it's, so it's about like a bunch of London. Um, do you know what chavs means? Mm -mm. So chavs, if someone was like a, I don't know what you'd call it in America, like kind of like a, like a, like a down and out, but like doesn't want to do any better for themselves and kind of, kind of like, they would steal off you and stuff. I don't know what you'd call that in America, but that's a chav basically. Um, but it's a good show. So um, people just do nothing. Um, what else? So we got the office. People just do nothing. Probably. I'm trying to think of shows that we've watched. Probably, probably again. I don't watch a bunch of TV. I don't. I don't. I don't. I. I, I try and house. I was a big fan of house. I loved, I loved Dr. House. Um, and I liked Scrubs back in the day as well, to be fair. I, uh, yeah, I like comedy. I like, uh, I like TV. The TV shows I like are the ones that kind of like, I don't have to pay much attention to. Just because, again, I, I, I don't really watch much of it, but I can just easily have it in the background. Mm -hmm. So having growing up watching shows and movies about the future, do you feel like technology is meeting, exceeding, or falling short of your expectations? I think so. There was a alien conspiracy thing I was reading the other day, and it was basically basically a bunch of aliens landed somewhere, and they were they spoke to this person, they took them aboard, and they said that technology is going to be the downfall of humanity. You get to a certain point where it's good. Or, and then you get to a certain point where you pass that and it becomes a problem. And I think we probably passed that point and it seems like we're going further and further and like not in a good way. Like you see the new thing that Apple just brought out, the Apple Pro. I was, okay, funny thing is I was just about to ask you about that. You read my mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I, I Again, like it just, it, it saddens me so much when I see like, a kid on like an iPad, like glued to it like this, or like there was something my friend posted the other day. Those things that you put on your neck and it holds your phone there, so you have to do it with your hand. 
I was like, come on, like it, it, it's, and you know what? Like us using our phone as doing podcasts, will that will soon be deemed like the old school way? Will it be? Like, it'll be like rogue. It'll be like, oh, those guys are just talking physically. They're not in the. They're not in the metaverse. Like I, it's, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. It's definitely. I think when you look back and you look at, um, I, I saw a clip once of a bunch of 1950s school kids, and they were saying what they thought the world would be in the year 2000. And it's always like flying cars and stuff like that. Um, but I think we've probably exceeded what we would have expected it to be. Like even 20 years, like 20 years ago, if you if, if I said to you 20 years ago, me and you'd be able to be doing this over here, you'd be like, what? Like 2003, that seemed like pretty wild. But yeah, it's I, I don't think it's good either way. I don't I don't I don't think I don't think the way that technology is going and how much you know what I don't think technology is bad. I think how much we rely on it is 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 pretty bad. I agree. Did you ever watch the Wally movie? It was a Disney movie. I you know I've never seen it. But I've seen the clips of like the the, the really big people. Like I was just gonna bring that up. That's literally how we're going in society soon. We're gonna have that Apple Vision thing that Apple's going to release soon and that's yeah. what people are going to be doing sitting on their couch wearing that and watching whatever they're going to watch on there yeah yeah it's it's bad it's bad and the same thing with like that's again that's why i kind of like struggle with like the shows and stuff because i i can't i find myself sometimes just watching if i watch too much i'll watch too many i'm like i, just, I can't do this um but it's the same thing with this uh ozempec pen Right, everyone's looking for a quick fix, and everyone, nobody wants to. It's the same. You can equate that to technology, and it's just like it's going to get to a point where I think I saw something a few years back where they think we'll start at some point start evolving with like almost like a claw hand because that's how we hold our phone, uh, and our necks will become more crooked because we'll be looking down like that. So like our bodies are also like. It's, it's so just, we're gonna be like a crab, pretty much. Yeah, just like hunched over, like a little weird claw for our for our farm. Um, it's not ideal. It's pretty bad. Yeah. It, but and again, like we said about with the conspiracies and uh, the the toxic wealth, people just don't realize how bad it is. It, it's 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 you know what if people are like yeah I'm 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 delving in technology I'm doing this and I know it's maybe not the greatest but I don't think people realize once they open that box like how bad it becomes mm. now why do you think mental health is such a problem nowadays is it technology or is it technology and foods we eat yeah definitely yeah. both both um definitely both and, and and again to go to go to the foods we eat the things that are sprayed on the crops the things in the air the 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 things we watch on tv the you get bullied at school when you was younger, when you was our age, you go home and you escape the bullets for the day. Now you get bullied at school, and all your friends are on here too. You're getting bullied online. Well, it's never ending. And if you're online, you're probably getting bullied for being not online. Like it's not the cool thing to do to not be online. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think and I think a lot again with with just expectation of of what I, I, I've been having this thought a lot recently and I, young girls are dressing way more aggressive than they did. Like young girls. And it's, yeah, it's, I, have, I have noticed that. And are we worse. talking about 15 to like 15, 13 to 15 year olds? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, even, I like, even yeah, even like long, younger, it's, it's gross. It, and I don't know. I don't know what that is. It, 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 there's no difference between the way that they dress and a 21 year old dresses at all. And it, it's, it'd be, it's not just like, Oh, wearing jeans. It's like heavily sexualized. And the pressure for that, again, the mental health, the mental anxiety, the mental aspect and anxiety and pressure behind that is, is, is probably social media because young girls watching, I don't know, Kardashians and they're gonna they're gonna resonate with that and try and recreate it I suppose I don't know but yeah so now what genre of music do you enjoy listening to hip hop 
What's your favorite bands in hip hop? Um, Jay Z, Fifty Cent. Again, hip hop is one of those things which I feel like has gone down in quality over the years. Uh, I know every generation says that, and they're kind of like, "My generation was the best," but it kind of feels like the the just the quality of the content. And now it's like I feel like I've really tried. I could probably make a hip hop song. It's just repetitive noises now. It's not really actual like lyrical context. Um, but I'm into the '80s too. I like '80s music as well. What else? Uh, yeah, I like '80s music. I like I like hip hop. I got. I when I was in Canada, I was kind of against country because I'd never heard like country music before living in England. And I was like, what is this? And then I actually grew to like really like it. Like I was a big fan. Now, what was your first ever concert you attended? First ever concert I ever attended was my friends for my 18th birthday bought me Kanye West tickets. How was that show? great it was great so when you go see kanye um and he brought jay-z out as a secret guest and then the year after i went to go and see jay-z and he, he brought kanye out as a secret guest um but yeah no i love that show it was great it was like that was 2008 we were talking yeah like 2008 that was um so it wasn't kind of the kanye of today it was uh just more about the music i suppose mm-hmm now, what are your favorite foods to eat or that you enjoy or your wife to make for you? Uh, she makes the best curry. Like She makes a really good curry. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big curry fan. And she's like, you want me to make curry every night? I'm like, I would eat that every night gladly. I don't care. Like, I would, I, I'm a creature of habit. I would, I would do this. I would eat the same thing every night. It's delicious. Um, we love tacos. Going out tacos, making tacos is a simple just a simple meal um but we love we love good quality tacos i love uh nose to tail food and what i mean by that is is using cuts of an animal that isn't see isn't deemed uh it's it's more traditional but it's not used as much now so like for instance like when we have curry we use like beef shin and we slow cook it for like eight hours um, but I love I love that I love using the cuts that we'd use back in the day because that's again that's what would you do ancestrally would use the whole animal rather than just the steak or the chicken breast. But yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Just quality quality food all around kind of uh, makes me happy. Would you ever go out to eat nowadays, or it's just whatever your wife makes at home? Yeah, I mean because we're in the little village we're in. Um, there's not much around, so we make most of our food here. But when we do go out, um, we'll go to like a place in York called Fish and Forest, which again is is local food. They'll do like um, they do a, a game, so like a venison or wild boar or even pigeon, <laughs> um, and then they'll do stuff in the sea as well. So like local fish uh, in season, cod or whatever. Um, and then we go to we go to London quite a bit. Um, so when we go there, we have a lot of food options there too. So where you're locally living now, do you guys have like a farm or like, like a farmer's market you go to that gets all your local produce from? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a local farmer's market down the road, about a five minute drive. Um, and then we have a butcher's here as well. Um, take the dogs there. They get fed some ham. They love it. Um, but that's the nice thing about the village that we've got. We've got a five minute walk into the into the village center. We've got the butchers, we've got a vegetable store, we've got a bakery, we've got a couple of pubs, which I don't drink, so I don't go there, but it's it's nice. Um and just everyone knows each other. Um and everyone's pleasant. It's it's yeah, it's nice. That's good. So now how did you get interested in nutrition in the first place? Did you have a personal problem with your health or a family member that made you go down the rabbit hole of looking at the truth behind this topic? No, no. So I mean, my my journey started in like when I was twenty. I got really into fitness, got really into working out, lifting weights, um, and you start to understand more about how it's not just going to. The, if you want to attain a goal on a physical, no, it's not just going to the gym and lifting weights and whatever. Nutrition is a massive part of that. 
so I got into kind of like tracking macros, like weighing my food out and stuff like that and making sure I was getting the correct carbs, protein, fats. And then I kind of, I've done all the different diets, keto, vegan, this, that. I've done it all. Um, and then over the last kind of, since I was 26 years old, just delved into the like deeper roots of nutrition. Why are people ill? Like what? what looking at seasonal food, where our food comes from, um, understanding food more, nutrients, vitamins, minerals, the phytochemicals of food, um, how plants don't want to be eaten, but can can be medicinal. Um, just just yeah, just my passion of, of food is and it's also a it's also a nuisance in my brain because the thing about nutrition and food is that it's almost pointless being a not pointless. It's not pointless, but as a nutritionist, as a job, and I'm, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just a nutrition enthusiast. But as a nutritionist, as a job, it's kind of you kind of shooting in the dark because every, you could you could thrive on a diet that wouldn't work for me at all, and that would go to again where you are geographically in the world, the the, the light that you get your your family background your gut biome everything um and it it's it's the problem with nutrition is is we all eat so it's it's everyone is allowed an opinion which they definitely should have so i think when we you see these blanket statements like you need to everyone needs to do this you need to eat this it it can't be that because again like there's there's certain people i know that are vegan that do really well and there's certain people i know that are vegan that lasted six months and did terrible so it's it's so complex, and but that's also what I love about it. I love the the complexity of it. That it, you're never going to find the answers out. It's 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 hard. So speaking of macros, what exactly is that? Because I've heard of the topic before, but I've never understood it. So if you can explain it to me and my listeners, so we can understand what macros actually is. Yeah. So I'm I'm not a big fan of counting macros. I was back in my bro days. I call them when I was a bro. Um, but basically you work out your, the calories that you're exerting. And if you have a specific goal, whether that's to lose weight, maintain or gain weight, gain muscle, whatever, based on the amount of calories that you're exerting, you work out how many calories you need to take in to attain said goal. So that would be say 3000 calories and you'd work out your how many carbohydrates you want from that how much fat and how much protein and to work that out the the modern way of doing that is there's apps online you can just put your data in like your height your age your how many times you work out a week whatever and then you'll use something like my fitness pal or there's an app called chronometer where you can just weigh your food out on a scale so you're doing I know 200 grams of ground beef, 200 grams of rice, and 100 grams of broccoli. Um, weigh that out. You can put that on your macros, and I'll tell you, you've had 70 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, uh, and 30 grams of fat. And basically, you have, you have a total for the day. So it's almost like trying to play Tetris with the numbers that you have for the day. The reason why I don't think that is a great way of measuring food is because I, I i just think the human body is way more complex than than, than counting calories I, I it i i think it's whenever i find myself tracking calories and go back to calories i i get almost sad because i'm like is that how like is that how broken the human beings are that we need to we can't just eat intuitively we can we have to put it into a little app like we should be able to know kind of and our problem again is probably abundance. Like me and you live in, you live in in California. Me living here, I could go to a McDonald's now and eat ten thousand calories within half an hour, easy. It, the problem is that we have so much food available, and that's where kind of counting calories can can kind of keep you somewhat accountable. But I don't. I think to uh, to say again, ground beef is two hundred and fifty calories. To put that in your body and 
you're not fully understanding how your body's digesting that, how much protein you're taking, how many calories. I just, I just don't think it's an accurate way of measuring. I think it's, it can be fun, but it can also be very addictive. Like that's why I stepped away because I, I found myself religiously like Jas, Jasmine would make a meal, and I, I, I'd ask her how many grams of rice, how many grams of this. I'm like, come on, man! Like my wife's making a meal. Like stop being a weirdo. Like kind of like it's. But people are like that. People won't eat out or eat something somebody made because they don't know how much was weighed out. They don't know the macros on it. How accurate are those apps anyways? Are they actually telling you accurately of how much you're getting, like nutritional-wise, like fat, protein, all that stuff? Yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of it goes off like USDA guidelines-based. Um, so again, like, it's, it's taking... I think back in the day, the way they used to count calories was, or they used to work out how many calories you'd get. So a calorie is just a a measure of energy. So I think they used to throw things in a, it's called a bomb calorimeter. And it's based like a big furnace. And they'd throw food in there or throw something in there. And they'd watch the thermic, how much time and how much energy it takes to break that food down. And they say, okay, well, that means this is 50 calories. So for every gram of carbohydrates, every gram of protein is four calories. For every gram of fat is nine calories. But I personally don't believe that you can mimic the human body with a machine. I think the human body in itself is a machine and it's way more complex than, than weighing out 200 grams of white rice. And again, and again, we, we, we probably both know people that eat a shit ton and don't gain weight. And we probably know people that don't eat that much and struggle to lose weight. So if calories in matters that much, then what's going on with these people? You know, like it's way more complex. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some latest nutrition topics that you've been researching lately about? Um, one second. I'm just uh, trying to stop my dog from coming in. Um, don't want the pugs on here. Uh, so nutrition topics I've been researching recently. It kind of falls into line with seasonal eating and, and, and light. I, I posted this study on my uh, Twitter the other day. Um, and basically, it was about they took three groups of rats and they exposed them to northern light. So light as if they were in the winter. So shorter days artificial light but that's what they're trying to mimic and then they gave them oranges from the they give them all orange so there was three rat group of the rats all exposed to northern light they give them oranges from the northern hemisphere that were grown in the north they give them oranges grown in the southern hemisphere and then they give them oranges that were being kept on like a van transporting somewhere the rats that ate the oranges from the southern hemisphere gained weight the ones that didn't were the northern hem were the ones that ate the northern hemisphere and the ones in the van so i'm looking more into does it make sense for me in the uk in december let's say to be eating a pineapple probably not and i think there's a lot more to I think it probably matters what light you've been exposed to and where that plant was grown and what light you're taking in because everything is, everything is signaling. And again, this is where I think the calories macros fall short because if, if you're eating fruit, what you're telling your body is that there is an abundance. It's summertime. Fruit grows in the summer, in the, in the, in the fall. It, it, it telling your body that it, it, it's safe, it's comfortable. And people wonder why they can't lose weight and that they're, they're consistently eating like it's like it's summertime. Um, and then on the flip side of that, not to go too complex, but you do you know about like polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-6, seed no, oil? If you want to explain that, you can go ahead. You know seed oil, you know seed oils, right? Yeah, I know seed oils. 
So, yeah, so the reason why seed oils are deemed bad, and probably everyone sees that everywhere now if you have Instagram, like seed oil, blah, blah, blah. like they're full of a fatty acid called omega, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, which is full of omega 6. So, there's an omega 3, which you get from like fatty fish, you can get it from flax seeds and chia seeds but in a, a, a poor more, less bioavailable form but mainly stuff like salmon tuna whatever um and then basically the human body needs very small amounts of these essential fatty acids you need maybe about ancestrally i think they thought we got a one-to-one -one ratio so one gram omega-3 one gram omega-6 so when you have too much omega-6 it becomes highly inflammatory in the body. Another animal that loads up on omega-6 are bears, squirrels, just before winter because they're trying to get fat. So they cram in as much as nuts and seeds and everything as possible. Obviously not seed oils, but again, th these things are still full of um, omega-6, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So again, you take a, a a regular bag of chips, you're going to see two ingredients, three maybe. You're going to see potatoes. The next ingredient is going to be sunflower oil, soybean oil, whatever, some, some kind of seed oil, and then maybe salt. The We all know potatoes have no fat, but when you look on the back of a packet of chips, it'll say nine grams of fat. That is all omega-6 it's all polyunsaturated fatty acids so right there with that one bag of chips you're taking your ratio from zero grams omega-3 to maybe 10 grams omega-6 and people are doing that on a daily basis if you go if you go to mcdonald's you may be hitting a one to 20 ratio by eating some fries and you're consistently telling your body that winter is coming where eat there, you're eating a diet which is full of omega-6, which you're, you're filling your fat stores in your body. All right, I need to store fat. I need to store fat. And that's why I believe why people can't lose weight because they're consistently signaling to their body there's a famine coming. There's winter. winter Because, again, we wouldn't have been this lucky ancestral. You look at any other animal, their, their, their job is to find food on a constant basis. We're lucky in a way, and not lucky that we have a fridge and we have a grocery store. But so many people are eating garbage that they're just signaling to their body that winter's coming when we almost live in a state of summer because we have an abundance all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some mis what are some common misconceptions about food uh, about nutrition? Um, I'd probably say that. One of my biggest gripes is veganism being healthy. Not that I don't think it can be healthy, but for instance, if you go to Starbucks, and I took a picture the other day of a, it was like a raspberry almond brownie cake, whatever. And all start, all start, this is how silly people are. It's how dumb people are. All Starbucks got to do is put a little green label behind it saying plant-based. And then was, oh my God, that's so much healthier. You know what I mean? Like, it, all they've done is take the egg and the dairy out and replaced it with sea dolls and, and, like, it's still sugar and, and it's garbage. Like, all they have to do is put a little green sign behind it saying vegan or plant-based, and people lose their mind like, this must be healthier, which I don't know where that started or when that started, but that's, yeah, that's definitely a massive misconception that people think, I don't know, it just baffles me. What are, what are other things that uh, make you annoyed about nutrition? that you have to that healthy eating is is has to be like chicken breast broccoli rice it has to be like boring like if you can cook if you can make if you you can make healthy food delicious like it 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 it'd be more of a struggle for me to eat garbage food i can't i can't do it like my my friend said to me the other day was like you never just like want to relax and just like just chill i was like bro like I love the food I eat. It's not, it's not, it doesn't stress me out. Like for me to sit down and eat a bag of chips would stress me out more because I, I don't enjoy that food. And I know it's going to make me feel like trash. Like, I don't know how you can sit there about like 
no, knowing that's going and then he texts me the next day. He texts me the next day saying, I ate garbage all weekend. How do I detox? I'm like, you not see like the circle? Like <laughs> So now what are some of the most common mistakes people make regarding nutrition or food just food in general? Again, fall into to the vegan, everything vegan is healthy trap is a big one. Um It, it, it's so hard because I could find you a study right now saying broccoli is a devil. <laughs> I, I could find I could find another story saying another study saying broccoli is one of the greatest foods we have. So it, it's probably again like probably just find like just you don't if you if there's vegetables that you don't have to eat. I think there's something when you're a kid when when you have your dinner and, and you plate and you're pushing the vegetables to the side there's probably something about that there's probably something intuitively that we're like we don't want to eat the vegetables we like we don't want to eat and i i love some vegetables but i think again the people that they have to feel like they have to eat bland and like there was a period where i was making spinach smoothies right i was making spinach smoothies and i had to cut it with mango to make it any type of like palatable um and then i ended up getting really ill I ended up getting like really sick. I had to go to the hospital because spinach has these little things in them called oxalates, little crystals. And it's what the plant puts in it to protect itself being eaten from insects. And I was taking like two massive handfuls of spinach and blending it up and drinking it. And I ended up coming with this massive rash all over my body because my body was trying to get out these oxalates. But I was still, when I was getting ill, I was still drinking it. I was like, it can't be my healthy can't be my healthy smoothie that's hurting me. Turns out it was. So speaking of going back to seed oils, what do you think about avocado oil? Do you think that's really that good or not really? Um. So yeah, I mean, I've, so there's there's three there's three fats like commonly that people know about is is polyunsaturated, which is multiple bonds, which is like a line. It's got multiple bonds in it. That's why it can become oxidized easily. There's monounsaturated, which is one bond, and then there's saturated, which is like your butter, your lard, your beef tallow, which is just basically a straight line. Um, I, I think avocado oil can be good. I personally, it's got a decent smoke point too. I personally wouldn't cook with it at a high temperature because I'll give you an example. What happens when you put an avocado in the fridge, like open it up and leave it there? It rots. Yeah, so it oxidizes, right? And that's 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 because avocados are they're a good source of omega six. We need some omega six in our diet. It is essential, but I think cooking with it might not be the best. It's not technically a seed oil because it's, avocado is a fruit, and you're not getting it from the seed of the avocado. It's like olive oil is a fruit. Olives are fruits, right? Um, you're taking it from the fruit. You, you're kind of uh, getting the oil from that. But yeah, I'd probably choose something different to, to fry or or cook at a high heat. Dressing would be good for olive oil, um, for avocado oil. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your opinion on the uh, on all these health influencers that preach nonsense things nowadays? Again, like I fell for it. I fell for it at times. And it, 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 it's, there's this weird human tribal thing where we want to feel part of a group. It was, it happened to me with veganism. It happened to me with keto. And you know what? When you stop doing it, you kind of like, oh my God, who am I? <laughs> like, I, I was, I, sorry to interrupt you, but I was a vegan. I did veganism for six years. Yeah. Four to five years. And let's just say that that was probably the worst mistake I could have done. You become tribal, right? You, you you find the people who are vegan, and like I, I remember when I stopped, and I had like dudes messaging me saying you was never vegan, you were plant based. Vegans don't stop being vegan. I'm like, okay, um, but but yeah, I I, th I think the problem with the influences that again, I I don't think anybody actually knows. Like nutrition is so complex, and I look at my grandma who eats. The same thing every day. She has a bowl of cereal for breakfast and she has a ham sandwich for lunch. And then she'll have some fish sticks and potato chips for, for, for dinner uh, or French fries, sorry. Um, 
and and she she's pretty healthy. She seems to be. So it's kind it's kind it's kind of like I think these health influences, like I said before, when they're saying you need to do this. I mean, you need to do this. Well, no, because they don't know your body. They don't know your background. They don't know how. They don't know what makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you do the vegan diet for a couple of of like for a year or two? And how did that go? Yeah, I did it for probably just over six months. Um, you know what? Like, I actually felt pretty good on it. Like when I first started, my my energy was was through the roof and I, I i i still don't quite understand if i was going to try and guess i'd probably say because I, di- I didn't go from a, a garbage diet i was eating healthy before that i just cut the meat out and then focus more on plant-based stuff um but i think the fiber was a big thing i think i think my body personally works very well on fiber and i think the, the gut microbiome, if you keep the, which is again, a, a completely new thing in nutritional science, but understanding more when you say you out, you eat, it's not just because you're consuming something that if you eat something, you're creating the, the gut microbacteria in your body. And then that will then crave something. So when you see someone that eats garbage food, it's almost like the bacteria is, it's the, it's the shitty bacteria they have in their stomach that's craving it. And it's almost like they're being controlled. Um, it's the same thing for healthy food. If you eat salads, you're like, you know what? I, I'd love a salad right now. It's not an issue. I'd love one. But the vegan thing for me was good. Um, tons of energy. But there was some pitfalls in the sense of I found myself supplementing heavy. And whenever I do that, I'm like, well, it's clearly not an ideal diet because I should be able to get all of it from food. Um, became dogmatic and surrounded myself with other vegans too much. And my iron ended up like tanking, like being really, really low to the point where I was getting like really bad dizzy spells and, and I was really pale and just, just, yeah. Um, and yeah, just he- chronic headaches, which I'd never suffered with before in my life. And as soon as I started incorporating more meat in my diet, seemed to get better. Mm-hmm. So now, why do you think people are promoting being fat as a cool thing nowadays? I know this is like that whole like being fat is like a new th- new thing. Yeah, but the the like the fat acceptance thing. Mm-hmm. Again, it's we live in a time where you know <laughs> we live in a time where the, literally you could make something up today and it can be it, you could find a group of people and that'd be that'd be it. I guarantee there will be, and I'm, I'll answer the fat question in a second, but I'll, I'll, use a, I'll use a comparison. You know how like vegans get upset with like people eating meat? Mm-hmm. So we're understanding more and more that plants actually have a, a complex way of, of feeling things. And they probably do sense pain to a degree. We just can't understand it. There is going to be a bunch of people in the future who are, so pro plant. Oh shit! I'm like I'm killing that plant. Um, but so pro plant that they'd be like, "How can you eat some kale? That is a living. That's a living plant. I mean, how dare you? How dare you take that? How dare you take those kidney beans? Those kidney beans are plant babies. Murderer. That I guarantee it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And that's to to segue away from that. It's the same thing with the fat thing. It's it's you can find any tribe for anything, and I just think it's I just think it's lost people because you've you've seen what happens in that in that crowd when when someone who is body proud and they're they're um, proud of being fat or whatever. You've seen what happens when they get healthy. Mm-hmm. The fact that the group turns on them. So it happened to Adele. Like Adele, when when Adele got like, like, seemed to lose weight, like she got turned on by the gang that supported her previously. It's crazy. So speaking of diets and like veganism, do you think like all these are like uh, some like, like something like cult related kind of thing? Yeah, I, th- I think so. Ancestrally, we would have probably been in a group of 
20 to 40, 50 people. And we would have all known each other. All our kids would have hung out together. They would have we would have all protected each other, all known each other's stories. There'd been nothing you didn't know about each other. It'd have been all and and we would have had a common goal to provide food for the tribe, to provide water, to protect from from outsiders and predators, and and that still in us. We're still tribal animals. But yeah, we 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 kind of it, it's we're still doing that, but it's in a completely different way. That's just how we manifest it by, by, by doing that now. Mm-hmm. So now what is your opinion on probiotics and pre probiotics? Do we really think it, do you think it actually works? I think they can. I think, I think uh, again, you can probably replenish some of the, but especially if you've, if, if you've been taking like a massive dose of antibiotics, then I think it might be beneficial. Cause I, I don't, I don't think people want to understand what the gut biome is and two i didn't understand back in the day when i was like younger that an antibiotic literally means like (laughs) anti-life that's like literally what it means if there's no take this anti-life pill oh why we're gonna kill all the bugs inside you the good and the bad um it's yeah so prebiotic private uh Probiotic, probiotics, I can, they could probably be helpful, but I wouldn't, I'd, I'd rely on other stuff, more so food, um, getting out in the dirt, getting in water, getting in the sun. I think we're way too clean nowadays. Um, and and get, having dirt on us is probably a healthy thing to, to be out, like feet in the, in the earth. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you think? Of, how do you think AI will play in a role in nutrition and healthcare in general? Probably like what, like you said, probably, probably like that. You know, probably people. Will, I think, yeah, I think we're already kind of seeing that with the Ozempic pen. Like, it's, it's not artificial intelligence, but it's definitely artificial medicine, and it's it's just yeah. It's I'm not sure how I'm not sure how AI. Other than probably getting rid of delivery drivers, it'll just be a robot delivering food to you or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, we already see AI when they do like operations, right? When they have like a robotic arm or whatever doing the operations, which is a helpful thing. It's, it's good that it allows us to do like keyhole surgery and stuff. And but again, there's always that line that you cross that you're going too far, and it seems like humans have a habit. Of, of going too far always we'd never kind of know when to stop yeah, we also use ai robots in like auto making industry they like create like parts and stuff so they don't really need like humans to do all that our labor yeah yeah, yeah. um one of my friends said the other day there was like, oh have you seen terminator i was like no i've never, I've never seen terminator and i was like you'd love it it's basically what's gonna happen <laughs> i was like oh <laughs> It's uh, there's like it's like Terminator kind of basically warns you about what happens when you start relying on AI too much, um, which I'm not sure if you can vouch for that. If, you, if you've seen Terminator, but... I have seen Terminator the first one, and I really yeah. don't remember the story that well. But I, I yeah. what your friend said, yeah, we're headed. They're not even Terminator. There are other story. There are other movies that predict what's going to come on, go on in the future, like Black Mirror, for example. Have you ever watched that show? Love it. Yeah, the whole like the whole uh, going back to the Apple Vision thing. They've already already said like I think they had an episode about it, or they probably brought it up during that show of the whole virtual reality stuff. So we're kind of already heading down the virtual reality path. Yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, I suppose the artificial intelligence towards food would be there's a big push right now um, for making like like obviously the plant-based burgers and stuff is big right now and that's 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 artificial in, in it itself it's, it's trying to mimic something that's not actually a real product um even some of the burgers like is it the impossible burger that like bleeds i don't know why i don't know why you'd want that if you are so averse to animal products i just, I just yeah well let's move on from the nutrition topics now let me ask you if you could travel if you could time time travel and go back to any moment in history, 
what, where would you go and what would you want to change and why? I would time travel back to the ancient Egyptian time. And I would stop whom or what burnt down the library of Alexandria. Because I think a lot of human knowledge and where humans came from originally stemmed from there. And I think it was probably burnt down purposely. As again, humans seem to do, if it goes against the narrative, they destroy it. But that's, yeah, I do that. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think money buys, buys happiness? I keep playing the lottery, so maybe. So, so somebody won. So somebody won. We do something called the Euro Millions here. So each country in in, in it's like the lottery, but each country in Euro plays. Um, and somebody won from the UK. One winner, one hundred and twelve million last week. And I've just been thinking since I was like, what would I do with one hundred and twelve million? And it's 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 not that it buys happiness. It's that it buys freedom. Because a lot of the stuff I worry about personally is money and work and stuff like that. With that money, I don't have to worry about that. And my parents don't have to worry about that. And my wife doesn't and, and her parents don't. Like it buy, it literally buys freedom. It, I don't think it buys... People can get unhappy with that. But I don't think it buys happiness. No, I think it buys freedom. Mm-hmm. Now, what are some of your favorite book genres or authors you enjoy reading books from? Uh, do you know Graham Hancock? I have heard of the name before. Yeah, so he's like he's just big on um, basically our history as a species not been been as he he thinks we're a species of amnesia, so we have been technologically advanced at some point like we we deem ourselves advanced now but he thinks we were advanced back in the past too and we got bait like that he thinks that's what potentially atlantis was and then it got wiped out and then we have to start again and he thinks this is a common theme in human history but yeah graham hancock i'm a, I'm a big fan of of his books well who else who else do you enjoy reading books from who else? I mean, a lot of the stuff I read will be like nutrition based. Um, so, yeah, there's a book. It's I forgot who the author is, but it's a book called Ancestral Wisdom, and it just looks at bun- a bunch of um, cultures from around big ass fly, a bunch of cultures from around the world, and kind of how ancestrally they eat, and it just shows a pattern. If if you eat from where you are and you eat the ancestral ways basically you eat the way your grandma ate and so on Mm -hmm. you're generally healthy but if you step away from that stuff goes wrong Mm -hmm. now who would it be if you could have coffee or dinner with any four historical figures and what would you want to talk about with them uh coffee and dinner with four historical figures and what would i want to talk about with them i would I'd have it with the uh, see yeah I'm thinking like is is it weird like I'd have it with Tutankhamun. Camun cool because Tutankhamun. Camun okay um, again I just love to understand that culture I I I, I don't think we under like and again I don't think he but I'd love to kind of think what the young king, what he thought of the pyramids and who who they were built by um, because the pyramids are just a massive mystery. We don't know how they were built. Um, it's, so I'd love to, anyone from that era, anyone who had any information from that era would, um, I'd, I'd love that. Uh, a person from history. It, it, why does it, it feels like it feels. I'd love to speak to Nikola Tesla because, like, he'd say things like 
if you understand the importance of three, six, and nine, you understand the universe, which is like super cryptic. But, and like he, supposedly he used to walk around the building like a certain amount of times before he'd enter. And just, yeah, I'd love to speak to him and pick his brain and just, 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 yeah, just uh, understand that. I all would also, speaking of, um, I'd love to speak to Pythagoras, ancient Greek philosopher, just because recently I was reading a book about how he died. And for some reason, back in ancient Greece, they thought, they thought that, well, some people thought that beans were the souls of the dead. And his death was, he was, I think, one of the first maybe recorded vegetarians. But his death, basically, he was getting chased. And he had a bean field. And he wouldn't run for it because he didn't want to kill the beans. And he ended up getting caught. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to just understand more about that belief just because it's, it's on my mind. Um, and then... You know what? I, I like. I'm, I'm uh, recently Elvis, Elvis. I think his story is wild. He might not be dead, so who knows? Um, if you if you want to go down that conspiracy rabbit hole, but he might not be dead. But yeah, I'd love to speak to him and speak about his life and whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, in your opinion, why do so many people love to kiss uh, kiss ass to our politicians? Or celebrities so damn much? Uh, because people, I, I have friends like this and some family, and they need to be governed. It's almost like a security blanket. That it's it's like a especially in these last three four years. It's people people need a a daddy. It, it's weird. It's I don't know why and and. Again, it's probably a tribal thing that we would have had a leader. The only problem is now our leaders are weak, yet still get this backing for some reason. Um, I had that problem in, in Canada with like Justin Trudeau. I'm like, why? Why is this dude the leader? Like, like, but people seem to love him. But yeah, I, I don't. I think it's often weak people who will gravitate to even weaker leaders. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were reincarnated as an animal, uh, based on your personality, what animal would you come back as? Um, I had this conversation the other day with my friend, uh, weirdly enough, and I said, I, I, probably a gorilla, just because I, I feel like I resonate most with that. Um. And it just seems like they eat all day, and I'd love to just sit there and just fucking eat all day, like. And they seem they, they, again, they seem super chill and relax, and unless you for like you go near a baby, which is natural response. Um, but then there's another side where, like a wolf, because I'm very loyal. Um, I'm very loyal, and and I I do like a, a pack mentality. I think it's important to have a strong individuals around you. But the reason why I kind of lean away from that is because I couldn't fucking be a, a merciless killer like a wolf. I couldn't just kill someone for no reason. Um, but yeah, probably like a gorilla. Like that, yeah. Now, what hobbies do you enjoy doing in your free time? Um, so learning about nutrition is my biggest hobby. But uh, working out is a big one. Again, we talked about. Uh, mental health in this podcast and uh, I think people massively underestimate how much that helps like, I only have to have a few days out of the gym or just not being active and that can be as small as walking the dogs um, but if I don't do that I, I, I kind of it's like my brain becomes like an idle brain it's like the devil's playground right it's like I if, if I work out I can I can alleviate that massively um and recently i'm learning spanish not I, i'm not fluent at all but that's one of my hobbies right now is learning spanish 
Now, what are some things you have to you have had to overcome in your life? Um, probably me, probably myself. It's probably myself being too obsessive. And again, I can use that to a an advantage where if I'm interested in something like again nutrition or ancient history or whatever, I will read and read and read and read about it and it'll go in the opposite of school because I wasn't interested in much in school. Like they were just nonsense. Um, but if I'm interested in the subject, I'll soak it up. Um, but my, the problem with that is I can become obsessive. And my wife has helped a lot with that. We're kind of just allowing me to relax, just chill, just, just, just get out of my own way. I think a lot of the time you can just like, uh, and I, we'll, we'll go for walks and I'll be talking her ear off about food and nutrition stuff. And she'll be like, what does your brain like just never, do they ever stop? I'm like, no, it actually feels like it's constantly like close to burnout. So it is that it's, it's learning to step away and being like, relax. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they affected you positively or negatively. Uh, again, my wife, uh, uh, I've changed completely with her and, and, uh, I'm, I'm the person I am today. And, um, she's a lot, uh, she's the opposite to me. She's super relaxed, super chilled. And I try and live more of that because I think it's uh, stress is a killer. So I think it's definitely a, a good way to just relax. And chill. Um, my, my granddad, um, He'd do anything for anyone. He his like biggest joy in life was like giving people lifts in the car places, and like he got really ill when he couldn't do that. I think there's something massive to if you stop someone from doing something that they love, like they can deteriorate pretty quick. Um, but yeah, him just he was again just super smart. Were super interesting, had a lot of stories about World War II and everything else, and just, yeah, super interesting guy. Um, and then I'm going to bunch them in collectively, but my dogs, my three pugs, again, just, just watching how loyal they are to me and to the family and just seeing how, how, how they treat each other and how they go about life and just, just, yeah, just just the love that they get from them is unreal. It's you you, you have pets, you know what it's like. It's it's uh, it's a different kind of bond. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the best piece of advice you have ever received from someone? Probably Jasmine again. Probably like just switch off. <laughs> just just switch off. Just just don't constantly. I grew up. Um, my, I, had, I had a great childhood, you know, but I was constantly felt like I had to be doing stuff. And like my parents, would, my mom would be like, I don't care what you do and just, just be doing something. Don't just be sat around doing nothing. So now I have a inability to chill because that's been driven into me so much. I have to be doing something. But again, just something as Jasmine just saying, like, just, just chill, relax. Like, go and lie in the garden when the sun's out. Go and you want to sit down and watch and that's again probably why i don't watch tv shows too much i don't allow myself to sit and turn off you're just like me i'm the same way either i have to put a either i have to read to like completely like go in a different world because i can't sit in front of tv anymore either i get distracted so easily yeah i can't watch a movie i i, I unless it's a really good movie like it, it it takes a lot for me to sit down for like two hours and watch a movie Mm -hmm. now what are three important life lessons you've learned so far um again it's probably the same answer relaxing but balancing the obsession with the with the chill um just doing something not to quote nike but like just like literally like going to Canada. Like I was, I was so scared about doing that, but I, I quit my job, applied for a visa and just went out there and it was easily the best decision I made. And it was the same coming back home to England. Like I was so, I was so nervous and scared about that. I think a lot of the time we, we constantly put ourselves in a box and like 
that what if just looms constantly above our head. Like what if, what if, what if? But if you just do it and realize that what's the worst that can happen? Like obviously that's circumstantial, but like a lot of the time, the things that we think the worst that can happen is so minimal to the to like to the to the head. In, in the grand scheme of things, like when you look back, I'm always when I'm going for a problem now, I'm going for an issue now, and something's really hard or it's, it's stressing me out. I'm like, how will I feel about this in five years? One, I bet it maybe can't even remember it because it's not that big of a deal, although I feel it is. And two, if I do remember, it, I'm like, oh yeah, that was like super ridiculous because I've grown so much. It's it's something that wouldn't bother me now. So, do you have any goals you want to achieve this year? We want to start our catering business back up here in England. Um, that's the plan. We we are doing it. We just want to do it to the to the uh, volume that we was doing in Toronto. Um, so we kind of kind of both can do that full time. So that would be that would be the goal that we can both focus on that and get enough clients. Um, maybe get a, a team like we had in Toronto to be able to cater for. So yeah, work independently. So what kind of foods do you like uh, like make? And then, then you send out to your clients. Yeah, so it's just like healthy, healthy food. Um, we can't kind of our our thing is like making healthy food that tastes like it shouldn't be healthy. Um, again, not just doing the generic bro chicken rice broccoli meals and saying this is healthy. Like, yeah, also tastes like garbage. Like nobody wants to eat this. Um, and Jasmine's an amazing, amazing chef. Like she, she just, just yeah, she creates so many good foods and. She's starting a cookie business too. Um, again, with minimal ingredients, so like grass fed butter, um, no seed oils, no preservatives, whatever. But yeah. So, speaking of Jasmine, how did you and her meet each other? Um, so, I moved to Toronto in 2016, and we, I moved there, like I said, by myself, I was staying in a hotel, no plan two-year working visa, kind of gone around Toronto seeing things, um, didn't have a job at the time, just moved out there with some money. And then I downloaded Tinder, like all good love stories start. Um, <laughs> uh, and I matched with Jasmine. At that point, I was on the way to New York because I'd never been to New York before. So I took a 12-hour bus ride from Toronto to New York. It cost me 60 bucks. Um, and we were talking the whole time, FaceTiming. And then when I got back, we met up. I kept going back to my hotel. We met up. Um, by the way, our first date was at her apartment. And people think that's weird. I don't think that's weird. Like, I know there's a lot of creeps out there. I get that. But if you want to get to, like, know the real person, don't go on a first date to the movies. Because, what, you're both going to sit there in silence while you watch the screen? Like, or even going for a meal, like, I even now, like when I got with Jasmine and she's been my wife for five years, we would go to a restaurant. When we go to a restaurant, I still won't act like I do at home. I'm still not, like, you know what I mean? Like you go there, and you're kind of acting in that polite restaurant way. Like it's, but yeah, anyways, that's just a side note if anyone wants to, whatever. Um, but basically, yeah, meeting, going back and forth, meeting, going back and forth. And then in a very Canadian, polite way, Jasmine said, you keep going back to your hotel room and going back here and we keep meeting. You keep bringing your bag. She's like, do you want to stay here until you find a place? And then I never moved out. What is something you like about her that made you want to say, this is my wife and my future mother whenever you guys have kids in the future? Um, She puts... I've never met anyone that puts everyone before her. And that's like a really good thing, but it's also a fault because some people do. I've seen friends of hers who do like walk over her. They, they, they recognize you know, someone recognizes somebody as too kind and they'll take advantage. So she, she's that person. She's a kind person. She's the one you could say something like, you know what, Jasmine, I really like oranges. Oh, like, I really like uh, that necklace. And she'll remember that when your birthday is eight months later. Like, she'll get you a bag of oranges or that necklace or whatever. Um, like, she's very thoughtful. Um, 
where it makes like gift giving for me to her very hard because her gifts to me are very <laughs> like they're out there. Um, but yeah, she just she just puts everyone first. She's um, she's very selfless. Mm-hmm. Now, what is something people seem to misunderstand about you? What do people seem to misunderstand about me? That I think people think that. I think I know it all. I've had a lot of people say to me, like, oh, you think you know it all? You think you're better than me? I'm like, I, I honestly don't think I'm better than anyone else. Actually, there's been a few times where I've been angry and like, no, you are. I, I do think I'm better than you. That's not a cocky thing. I just I, I just do. Like, <laughs> weighing it up, I think. Me and Jasmine said it to each other in an argument. When Jasmine's like, you think you're better than me? I'm like, yeah. I was like, you think you're better than me? She's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, well, at least we agree. Um but yeah, maybe like that I think I know it all. And it's literally not that. It's like I, I am I admit that I, especially when it comes to food and nutrition, I know I know a lot, but I know nothing because everything changes all the time. It's yeah, I I, I just just or me here that, that I'm gonna change my answer. It's because people that you stress too much, you worry too much. And I do, I agree. By stress about things that I think warrant stressing. I stress about things that I'm not going to eat shitty food or I'm going to try and source out organic produce. And again, the same people are like, just relax, man, just eat it. I'm like, a misconception is that I'm stressing that that that's some, the misconception would be that that's negatively impacting my life, but it actually makes it better. Now, what is your proudest accomplish- accomplishment so far? Uh, proudest accomplishment would be setting up our own business in Toronto. Um, that's closely behind that is just moving to Toronto because, again, I moved out there not knowing anyone, just just wanted to. Uh, North American culture interests me a lot. I, I, I like North America. I think it's a really cool place. But yeah, setting up our business and just kind of going out on a whim um, and making it su- successful for three years in Toronto was um, was massive for us. How long did it, how long did it take you to get your business started up in Toronto and all that stuff? All the legal ways and then officially opening it up for people to come and get what they needed from you. Pretty quick, like it, it's we. So we got all the legal stuff sorted out, and then we we was renting a, a commercial kitchen in downtown Toronto with some single clients, and then we ended up signing with. I ended up contacting a local rugby team um, called the Toronto Wolfpack, and said, "Look, we cater food. I'd love to be able to give your team, your athletes, food. There's 40 players, there's 20 staff. Any opportunity." They got back to me, and that was that was literally off an Instagram. I sent them an Instagram DM. They got back to me and said, "Yeah, we'll do a week trial. You can do a week with food." And then they ended up signing us to a, a three-year contract. From there, that was our first year of business, first six months of business. Um, so we I, I, we got pretty lucky with that. That like really lucky. Um, and I think that's what we're searching for now. Like we we want that kind of volume, but. I, don't, I think sometimes we don't we underestimate how lucky we got we'll just get in that contract just kind of out of nowhere mm-hmm. now questions to end the episode what is giving you hope right now giving me hope right now is that was an alien invasion and in it <laughs> no giving me hope right now is I actually do want that by the way but um because I, I, I think, I think that would wake a lot of people up, and it, it. I think once you, once you uh, wake people up, we can kind of restart and start to get healthy and good again. But my hope is that we more people start to wake up and understand that your common, your common man. Who, 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 and by man, I mean male, female, whoever, common person down the street who you see is not, is, is not your enemy. That's not the person. It, it's, it sounds cliche and it sounds super conspiratorial, but the people that you deem the leaders, 
that's the enemy. They're the people that want to do like they don't want you to be healthy because that that makes them richer, makes them wealthier. Um, so my, my one of my wishes is that people start to wake up and just start to live a more of a pure life. I'm not asking people to start rioting and going towards parliament and saying, ah, we're like uh, pitchforks. But I'm saying like, just, just live a pure life. Understand that everything we do as humans has an impact on the earth and, and it's, it can be bad or good, but it seems like it's a lot of bad right now. But yeah, people wake up more. What are three other podcasts you recommend to my listeners and why? Three other podcasts. Um, I would recommend Teresa's. The I forgot what it's called. What's it called? Spiritual Gangsters Podcast. Ah, fucking hell. Sorry, Teresa. <laughs> uh, a Spiritual Gangsters Podcast. But yeah, that one. I'm I'm uh, I, I'm a fan of that one. Um, you know what? You know the music producer Rick Rubin. No, nope. you know? so like he's like so like I asked Jasmine that question yesterday. She didn't know. I was like, what? But like he's produced people from like Metallica to Jay Z. Like he's got a big discography. Um, his podcast is actually really cool. Um, forgot what it was, but just search Rick Rubin on any podcast stream, and you will. Right. I'm clearly not good with names. Um, and I like Sam Tripoli's Tin Foil Hat podcast. I'm a fan of that too. I'll just put it in that when I'm driving somewhere, I'll just got two hours to listen to something else by that one. Well, what other podcast do you listen to? Uh that I also listen to Paul Saladino, aka Carnivore MD. His podcast is called Fundamental Health. I listen to that podcast, which is again all about food and stuff like that. I listen to Ben Greenfield Life. Ben Greenfield's a biohacker. Um, again, food, but also lifestyle, environment, stuff like that, EMF, Wi-Fi, kind of protecting yourself and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's best. Uh, I think I think it's just those. Mm-hmm. Now, if you had the attention of the world for five minutes, what would you want to tell them? Attention of the world for five minutes. I would... I'd say, hey, get off your phone. I guarantee someone would be on the phone. <laughs> and I'd say, I was look, look, looking at you, and they're probably about, uh, I don't know, three billion of people on the phone at the time. I'd say, get off your phone. Start actively interacting with people. It's like, it's, it's stop losing yourself in social media that you have to consume yourself all day and you have to exist on it because eventually you won't, you won't, be able to tell the difference between social media and real life. That's the way it's going. And I just think just just spend more time with family. Spend more time. Life I know saying life is short is like cliche, but it really is. Like I've been spending so much more time with my, my grandparents recently because I can just ask them questions. And like my nana who doesn't have a phone. She does she has like a little flip phone, like a little drug dealer phone. <laughs> like a throwaway phone. Um but like just asking them questions about, like, I ask them what they, eat, they used to eat back in the day or what they used to do. Or like my nan was telling me the other day, she got an orange for Christmas. I like just speak to different people and speak to older people and learn stuff and talk to people. And that's a big thing. I just say talk to people. And that's why I think podcasts shine because people will go on Instagram and they'll comment and they'll do this and they won't actually get to know somebody. And that's why people can talk crazy in the in the comments because it's such an easy way to just say something and dodge. Mm-hmm. It's like Twitter. Twitter is an easy way to just say something and dodge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, just say just talk to people, whether that's in person or of a podcast, first time, whatever you whatever you're as able to you, just 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 do talk to people. And now lastly, where can people find you online? Um so people can find me online, Daryl Hopcut Nutrition. Um, that's basically it. I don't have any other handle. Oh, I have a YouTube channel which I occasionally upload to, which is just again my full name, Daryl Hopcut. Um, kind of set that up detailing my journey from England to Canada and then back. Um, but yeah, yeah, just Daryl Hopcut Nutrition on Instagram is kind of where I am most of the time. 
And you guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Hawkett Podcast on the screen, all in one word, lowercase. You can find my podcast on all podcasting platforms like Apple, Spotify, etc. And you can also find my videos of my interviews on YouTube and Rumble. That's it for me. Thank you so much, Daryl, for coming on the show today. Cheers, man. I appreciate it.